Greetings, viewers. Adventure Link here. Back again is the Watch Dogs guy. Hello. Well, how are you doing today? Good day, good evening, whatever time that this is for you. Hope it's going well. This is an upgrades video because today we are going to extract this radio and we are going to install this Jensen radio in its place. This is model number V as in Victor, X as in Xavier, 7010. Additionally, I also have this um, Axis steering wheel controller. This is pot number A as in Allen, S as in Samuel, W as in William, C as in Charlie, dash one. The patient is a 2006 Dodge Grand Caravan with the SXT package with the 3.8 liter V6 engine. Although this should work on pretty much any fourth generation Chrysler and or Dodge minivan as a whole. I'm not sure if it's go like this for your van or not, but if you have a steering wheel control, this is an example of it on the right side, then you'll need the controller for that. Of course, you can use any radio that you please. This is the radio I want to install in my minivan today, and that's the one we'll be using. So for pre-game preparations, um, the first thing you can do is um, solder in your uh, factory to aftermarket converter harness and to the electrical connector for the aftermarket radio. Make sure that you do uh, match the colors and orientations, you know, like um, black to black, green to green, white with a black stripe to white with a black stripe, etc. Um, if you are installing the uh, steering wheel controls, I would advise you make a pigtail off of the uh, orange wire because that is uh, pin number 14 on your aftermarket radio. Um, supposedly it's for the Demer control. But on the other hand, the steering wheel control is controlled off of pin 14, so whatever, we'll just see how this goes, and if it goes, it goes, and if it don't, well, then you can learn something off of me and don't use that wire. You'll have to find something else to tap into. Additionally, the red wire on your aftermarket radio. Right, this is it right here. That's your uh, on-off for the uh, ignition. If you want to, you could uh, trip a relay off of this. You don't have to run this. But if you do want to like uh, add additional accessories like extra power adapters, seat warmers, and massagers, neon and LED lights everywhere, dot dot dot, etc., then my advice to you would be to you know trip it off a relay so you can have it in um, ignition power. That's what this red wire is for. You can run it into a, a relay coil, pin 85, then you can ground out the other end, which is pin 86. Run a new fat wire, preferably like 10, 8, 6 gauge into pin 30, then run another fat wire out of pin 87, again, preferably the same gauge as you made the first wire, which 10 to 10, 8 to 8, 6 to 6, whatever, then run that into a fuse box, then you can run things and accessories and run safely. For now, you will want to leave off the yellow wire because we will be running a alternate power feed into the radio compartment for the yellow wire. Then of course with this yellow wire on your um, factory to aftermarket harness converter, from here you can just uh, electrical tape and heat shrink wrap it or put a wire nut over it. You probably won't need it, but with the way this is all um, looped with a dual hot, constant hot all the time, I'm not sure what's on this radio where you have to have two hots and it's looped like this. But just in case, I wouldn't be pulling a radio fuse if I was you, just let alone yanking this wire out. Just go ahead and seal it off. Next thing you want to do for pre-game prep is you want to take your uh, dash install kit. As you can see, I've got Metra pot number 99-6503. Additionally, there's a, a QR code. Um, you could pause the video and... Um, Scan it for more information, but it looks like the um, installation is pretty straightforward. You'll take your uh, DIN cage into the radio housing, you secure it by bending the metal locking tabs down. You'll slide your radio into the cage and secure, then locate the factory wiring harness in the dash. Then that's, that's where our um, converter pieces come in at. Then reverse the removal is your installation. As for the cage removal, as you can see, there's that little uh, snap down brace. One here, one over here. 
You'll have to dig your flathead screwdriver into each side and then move it down slightly so you can get to the other side. Be careful not to let it roll back up and then you can eventually wiggle it down and out. Don't forget this piece afterwards though, it is pretty vital. As for the braces um, or for the radio cage like I did here, I bent it up towards the um, dash connector. You basically want the dash connector or the dash install kit to look something like this where the screws face out and the pen faces back. What I did was I fit a flathead screwdriver down in there, bent the pin up. Then you want to do the same thing on the left and right. Also on the back here, left, right, and middle. As you can see, I got the middle done. And then the side tabs on both sides here and here. Then as for that other piece I was talking about that you don't want to forget, you can see you want to install it like this for the uh, notches here and here. will line up like this and then they just click right on in. Then you can tuck it in like that. It's that simple. Oh, hey, to my friend Pandora de La Salle. I think I pronounced that correctly. If I didn't, I apologize. Hey, this radio has your link on it. Okay, so real quick, I want to make a real quick call out here. Um, this is all your uh, wiring diagram information. Um, I'm going to try to hold this steady so you can read it. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read more on it. Because I'm not going to go into each little uh, wire here. You can see this is a pretty recent ra radio. Even on Amazon's listing, the production year was like um, 2014, like February, March or something. But the main reason I want to make this call out is see this 12 volts ground, 15 amps max. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why I always run new power lines when I install these stereos. Especially after, like I said before about the Saturns with the F5 issue. As a real quick, uh, too long didn't watch version of it. Basically, these aftermarket radios and the power adapters overload it, burn it up, and then cause intermittent drivability issues because the fuel pump is also triggered off the F5. And then the only fix for that is to replace the wiring, respring the connection, clean it up, and then you want to bypass the F5 on your power adapter and your radio by, run by running the uh, constant hots on their own constant hot from the battery respectively. As a side note, I did um, run an 18 gauge wire, unfortunately for this radio. I do believe the max on that is like 13 amps, I believe it is. So learn from my mistakes. Don't use an 18 gauge wire. You're better off using a 16, excuse me, because of the 15 amp max. Additionally, I'm not sure if these minivans have the same electrical malarkey like on Saturns, and I don't care, but I strongly doubt that the constant hot going towards the radio can handle 15 amps all at once. And now it's time to start running the power line, but before we begin, first off, I wanna give credit to uh, a man named Justin Ryan Emery, and yes, I can say that because it's public, but that's another video for another day. In any case, I want to thank him for um, the instructions on how to run the power lines in the first place. And all his patience and tolerance for all my stupid questions in the process. So, thank you. In any case, I'm at the quick tip. As you can see, this is a concrete walkway here with uh, somewhat paved asphalt. And I'm sure in your garage it's going to be much more smoother than this. Either way, since you are going to be um, down here on your knees, I'd honestly recommend you get like uh, knee pads or a knee saver pad or something. Or... As you can see here, this pad is missing because it's on the ground because you could actually use this down here and in, and in my experience, it actually feels just as good. Additionally, you may want to remove it anyway because you will have to pull back some of the carpeting. So now it is time for us to actually run a power line through this vehicle. As you can see, I already pulled the carpet back. No big deal. Just pull it back to where it um, braces underneath the uh, brake pedal. You want to come in through this grommet here. All I gotta do is take your uh, big flat bladed screwdriver, keep on going until it comes through. Came through quite effortlessly, if I don't mind saying. Now, if you can see where that big long screw, that big long straight pole is, that is our screwdriver that we just uh, stamped through that grommet. As you can see, it's kind of a tight squeeze to get into here. Even with these big fat hands. Almost there. Come on. Almost. Ah well. All I know is that's a screwdriver, but as you can see, my arm is on this exhaust manifold here. So I would really advise you do this on a stone cold engine. 
Remember, safety, structural integrity, quality, the right tools and parts for the job, and doing the job right the first time, every time, are number one. And as a side note, if your name happens to be Quality, and you just like my videos, then I guess the quality factor of this channel has gone down a little bit, now hasn't it? What I did is I got a line fish here. See? Line fish. Nifty little tool. I uh, bought it off Amazon. I'll put a prime optimized link in the description. But you want to remove the screwdriver and then feed the line fish in from where you just poked the hole for that grommet. Okay, so as you can see underneath those uh, braided lines, there's your line fish right there. And it's going to be take two on um, getting my fat hands and fingers through this little space and to the wire fish. So after a little bit of fighting there, I do have my hand on the line fish. I can feel it. You can see the hump. See, there it is. There's the hump. Got it on the line fish. Then all you want to do is, um, when you have it freed up, you'll find the hump again. There it is again down here. Then use your better hand to free it on through. And there it is. See, there's your line fish. Please ignore the white wire, excuse my dust and all that. The white wire is going to be used in a future video on, you know, the more elaborate power line running video. I decided to run this wire in the same time as this. That way it'll save me some trouble later on. But of course I'm going to reuse the same scene from here and there. So with that being said, you're going to want to like, like loop your wires into the hook, what was the hook. And then you clamp them down with electrical tape, as you can see. So next thing you want to do is um, run your fish line through. <laughs> you can see um, the grommet kind of popped itself through. Um, don't worry, just um, keep fighting with it until you get your wires in. So all you can do is just fight with it. So as you can see, I uh, pushed the grommet back in with my hands. Don't worry, the grommet just slides up and down. And I think it's got it in a little bit better for you guys on cam. <laughs> of course, you can always use like a screwdriver or something to pop it in a better place. But for the time being, all you want to do is just take your lead, or leads in this case, then just tuck them somewhere safely away. That'll do for now. And if you're like me and you're um, running wires and you're gonna tuck one in for a future project, you can always safely tuck it in just like so. Um, you could either get it under this uh, brace here, under it or over it, loop it all the way back around here, back behind the battery cable, and tuck everything back here. Remember, you do have hot exhaust parts, like I said before. Additionally, you do have this engine coolant reservoir. So you want to be mindful of that too, so you don't burn your wires up. Ground taps, you say. Well, you can always pull this panel back here. Wiggle this out. And there's a bolt here you can use. And a bolt back there you can use. Either way, both of these are 13 millimeter headed bolts um what i did to run these lines through is i started you know from the uh from the radio hole go down through over here safely behind this little drain thingy here or whatever that's supposed to be that way the parking brake doesn't nick it then from there you can uh, terminate to one of those screws as you please alternatively as you can see i've got another ground tap in here it's in the radio pretty painfully obvious 10 millimeter bolt you can undo it and then put yourself a ground strip a ground uh, wire through here basically what i did was i wrapped it around this little brace here and then tapped into the bolt from there so the first thing you want to do is disconnect the negative battery terminal from the battery 
It's a 10 millimeter socket. Keep on going. Loosen the screw up. Bail it off, off it comes. Then uh, you'll probably want to wedge the cable like somewhere right around here. That way it doesn't touch the negative battery again. So now we're on to the radio extraction process of this video. Um, step zero is to remove this cup holder here. It's step zero because some people will remove the cup holder. Others won't because this because next step, step one, is to remove this trim piece. Either way, it's a pretty easy process to remove. So why not do it? Um, as you can barely see, it's right where my finger's pointing at. That is the tab you'll need to go after. So you want to push in, push in the tab, then pull, and then pull the cup holder out, just like so. And then step one is to pop this little um, access panel off, like I said. You'll use a, a flat-bladed screwdriver or a panel remover to pop this out. Out she comes. Then the next thing you want to do is uh, remove these two Phillips head screws. One right here. And one over here. You want to go ahead and um, remove those now. There she is. Then just uh, put it over to the side or something. Then go ahead and extract the other screw, which is right down here. Like I said. There she is. Then put it over next to the other screw. Next thing you want to do is uh, pull the radio out. Um, do the loop you pull just like that. Out it comes. Just so you know, if um, you hardly ever open this up or if it's your first time opening it up, you may want to put a little bit of muscle in here. Um, just as a fair warning, don't pull down here or pull like literally inside this uh, compartment down here for your uh, tapes and stuff. You could break something. Then you want to line it out. There she is, almost all the way out. It's almost all the way out because we've got these electrical connectors to deal with. Um, you've got this one up here for the um, passenger airbag sensor for the light to sense the airbag so it can trigger or not. Additionally, you have these up to three electrical connectors for your HVAC controls. You can start with this one down here because as you can see, this is mainly what's holding us back. You want to push in the tab. Out it comes. Uh, just as a fair warning, did you see the uh, air airbag maca? You know, that light right there where my finger is. Did you see that uh, turn off and then back on? See this connector here? If you don't have this connector back in its little housing and its home, that you'll get that airbag light. So if you're getting um, phantom airbag lights after completing this job, start there. Next thing you want to do is um, remove your up to three electrical connectors. Um, depending upon the uh, model yeah, of the van as well as the packaging, you could have one, two, or up to three of these connections. Um, what I do with this one right here is I uh, come in from underneath, put a flathead screwdriver, then you can pop it out slowly, that's out. Then for this connection right here, you want to wedge your uh, flathead screwdriver down here, put it underneath. Then you can uh, pop it up from there, just like so. Then for this uh, middle connector here, you'll um, want to walk, probably want to take a screwdriver, go in like this, and keep on going like that. Then you can pop it in the other end, and it should come out just like this. Or you could try and uh, walk it all the way out from there. Actually, that is good enough where it is because you can uh, take the tab right here, push in, 
out of cum. Then you can take this tab, squeeze that in, out she come. And for this tab right here, you can just push that in, this button right here, slide it out, out she comes. And uh, we're going to remove this uh, extra wire here that goes to our tape deck converter. And there it is. There's your faceplate, all extracted. Um, keep in mind that you have your clips back here. There's one here, one here, one over here, one over here. And then two up at the top. Um, you'll want to slide the top ones in. And then the middle one's in, and the um, faceplate should come back on. Don't try to force anything in, though. Now for the radio extraction itself. There are these four screws. One here. One here. One over here. One over here. You'll want to start unscrewing these screws now. See? There it is. Then you can uh, place it right down here, separate from the other screws, just in case there are um, different thread pitches and links, and that way you can uh, keep everything separate from the uh, faceplate and the radio, so that way you don't mix anything up later. See? There it is. Tuck it down right there. There it is. Tuck it down there. See, you want to tuck it right down there and make sure it's all together. And the next thing is this last one. There it is. Then tuck it away just like so. And before we go on, you see what I did there? <laughs> then from here, you can remove the radio as normal. However, before we get it all the way out, as is with the radio like this, before we um, unplug it, this is your last chance to free up any discs in the disc drive or any tapes in the tape drive in this case. So you can put the vehicle in accessories or run. I put it in run, you can tell because it's dinging on me. Obviously push the eject CD button to eject the disc from the disc drive. Nothing, we're good. Then you push the eject tape button to take the tape out of the tape drive. Success, tape deck extracted. Um, You don't want to have your radio end up like a certain grand marquee radio. <laughs> Where the owner forgot to extract his tape deck converter, and now it's pretty much stuck in there until he can reconnect it back to power so he can um, get his tape deck converter out. Now it's time to get the radio off the car electrically, or the van rather. Um, you'll wiggle the antenna out. There it is. The thing you want to do is um, free up the radio connection at the radio. You'll push the tab in, and normally you'll use some force to get it out. Not a lot. I want to make a real quick call out to this uh, blank connection here. This is the main connector, but this is your accessory connector. Like for uh, CD changers, iPod con controllers, etc. So if this is blank, don't worry about it. But in, this, but in any case, that's it. We got the grand prize out, which is the radio. And as a real quick side note here, if you choose to take on the electrical project, which I wasn't trying to make this video end to one, but I'll put it, I'll cover this, you know, better detail in the other video, but real quickly, you could um, extract these two screws here. This is for your, uh, like where you hold your cassettes and all that, the little tray. There it is. Then, of course, you want to set the screw off somewhere else. Then you'll get the other screw, which is over here.
There it is. Then you want to set the screw off somewhere else. Then you can uh, pull out the tray here. Ta-da! Huh. Now it looks like you got a lot of room to conceal a relay and a, few, and a small fuse box in here. Which that's one of the things I got to give Chrysler some credit for. Is that they at least thought to have a, a more roomy uh, radio compartment. Good news is that this is completely concealable back here for the very most part. Bad news, anytime a fuse blows or you have to replace the relay, you will have to open the radio back up in this whole faceplate to get to it. So if you want to put it there, great. If not, find your own alternate tap uh, concealment, easier concealment, you know, for the relay and fuse box. Then you can make your own video and let me know how you did it. And uh, put the tray back in. There's an alignment tab, one here, one over there. You slide the tray back in until it slides into tabs. Then you'll take your screw, start it in by hand to prevent cross-threading. Same deal with the other screw. Start it in by hand to prevent cross-threading. Then you can finish the job by uh, screwing in your screws all the way. And there it is. Another real quick call out, um, dependent upon who made your uh, harness converter piece. There will be this little door here, pretty simple. You can just take a flathead screwdriver, pop it in the pop it in the uh, big fat empty spaces in the center. Then you should be able to pop out the door from there. And now it's time to get our constant hot into the radio compartment. What I did is I got my line fish here, put it in there. Then it comes out, out the back. Then it goes out down here. And that's where our uh, CR2 line from before, where I tucked them in. That is what we're gonna be working on right now. So go ahead and uh, free up these two lines. Right, I had them tucked up here actually. No wonder why they was hard to pull. See? There they are. So we got a few more wires to mess with here. Um, the white with the purple stripe is for the steering wheel control uh, mode A. The white wire with the uh, brown stripe is the steering wheel control mode B. The brown wire with the with the black stripe is the ground for the steering wheel controls. This wire here, the black one, is blue is for your uh, Bluetooth antenna. The green wire here with the uh, white stripe, right? It's got a little white stripe on it. And it's a green wire. It is for the uh, reverse trigger on the uh, backup camera. The pink wire is your uh, parking brake. Race wired into the parking brake switch, you, or you can always just ground it out to bypass it. Doesn't really matter. The blue wire here is for the is for a power antenna, and I believe it's also used for the uh, for an amplifier too. I want to make a real quick call out to these um, yellow wires here, or the yellow ended wires. The one that says camera is for your backup camera. The video out wire is for a um, like an external monitor. And you know, if the screen goes out, you can always put an external monitor here. AUX2L, AUX2R, which is the uh, red and white wires, is for the um, second auxiliary in input, like for a, a Nintendo Wii or N64, Super Nintendo or whatever. That's your video input for the auxiliary two. The blue wire is for the subwoofer. This fat wire here is for your radio antenna. This here is your microphone connector for the Bluetooth calling. This gold connector is for your uh, GPS antenna. This white connector here is actually for a um, satellite radio, like a Sirius XM. Um, as you can see, this is a uh, SX v100 bus that is the receiver you will need to get in order to get serious in your vehicle still not sure what the little black hole does though so as a quick recap as to where we're at right now you can see i got the steering wheel can the uh, steering wheel control connector put into place here um additionally i got the parking brake grounded out so we can bypass that also we have our um wiring connected to the steering wheel controller the red wire here goes into the ignition um, 
key, you know, for the on and off of the ignition wire down here is for our um, orange wires. You can see that pin 14, the pink wire from here, you know, you could pretty much um, tape up anything that wasn't used, tape it up, seal it up, whatever you got to do. And now it's time to get the Bluetooth uh, phone mic in and the GPS antenna installed. Okay, so I got an idea as to how I'm going to run in this wiring for the GPS antenna and the Bluetooth mic. This uh, panel here looking pretty tasty here. So, you know what? We're going to rip it down by hand. Literally. Just be careful not to break any of the clips. Then it slides out like so. Okay, let's start with the GPS antenna. Um, what I did was I ran it down this hole here, ran it down there, then played the touchy-feely game to get the wire down to the ground where it is right now. Of course, you can also run your wire fish through the hole too and then see if you can get it down there also. Then from there, it's just like running the power line then to the center console, just like how you did earlier. Then into the then into the radio console it goes. So the Bluetooth mic, I don't think I could have got as lucky with that one. So what I did was I ran its wire into the console here, behind the brace, actually behind the lower brace here, and then into its little home somewhere in this mess, you know, like right here. Um, additionally, uh, make sure to connect your uh, radio. You'll need a harness for that. I'll uh, edit in the part number. I kind of don't have it offhand, but you put the radio harness in here and plug in the other end of the radio in there. Um, don't forget to also terminate the other end of that uh, new constant hot. There it is down there. Basically just turn it, terminate it into the positive lead there. As you can see, there's a 10 amp fuse there. Um, I put that in there for a reason. Um, and now from here, I do believe we are ready to um, at least tuck everything in somewhat. So um, let's get on with it and I'll see you in a bit. Before we get ready to test everything out, um, don't forget to reconnect your negative battery terminal. Very simple, just like that. Then you can start it in by hand. Then from there, when it gets uh, tight enough, like it is right now, then you can finish the job. Remember, it is a 10 millimeter socket or box wrench. So now we got the radio uh, somewhat reassembled here. I'm going to go on ahead and um, get the access controller module programmed. Uh, remember, you want to connect the pink wire into pin 14 of the radio. Put the red on the ignition hot for the on off, which is the red wire of the radio. Put ground on a separate ground like I showed one of the separate ground points I showed you before. So let's get started. Um, remember that you want to put the vehicle in run. Then pretty much start spamming the volume up button until the red light stops flashing. That's done. Now we're going to get seven flashes, which the, which indicates the pink wire. Additionally, we get six red flashes, which indicates Pioneer slash Jensen. And bullshit. It's flashing. I've pretty much done everything I could think of, like clip the orange wire that goes, you know, from the, from the radio that would normally splice into the harness. It still flashes. Um, I've tried connecting both uh, SWB A and B wires. It still flashes. Remember that the uh, pen 14 is the dimmer wire. Um, I'll post a, a quick reminder picture here to show you that it is what it is. Um, pen 14 on a wiring a connection diagram is a, is some kind of PCI bus. So I'm not sure what their what the problem is here. So, if any of you guys have an access ASWC-1 and you want to help me out with this, that'd be great. I'm pretty much just going to toss up the white flag and make this an SOS section. Because I've done everything I could think of. And this thing still flashes and will not detect my steering wheel controls. So, with that being said from here, um, I guess you're going to want to reverse a removal is your installation. 
I do have some tips on reinstallation though. You may remember a comment that I made about all that room in the back for relays and such. Well, with great room comes great sacrifice. And in this regard, you may have saw at times in the video where I had the cup holder closed and it wasn't flush with the, with the body panel here. Well, what I did was I temporarily installed the cup holder back in place. Which, like I said, you can remove the cup holder. You don't have to. But what I did is I put the screws in for the cup holder down there. Remember, one there, one over there. Put the cup holder in place and then tucked everything back in the best that I could. Additionally, you'll want, there's also a brace up there that you may want to also tuck like the bigger wires, like for the AV, the Bluetooth mic and all that. You'll want to try to route it over that brace. That should help things out too. You'll also want to route the uh, radio harness back there too. Uh, don't forget to reconnect all your electrical connectors, especially that one right there. Otherwise, you will get airbag lights that come on out of nowhere. And, and of course, before you do remove this panel, if you do follow my tip, please make sure you do remove those two screws before you put the panel back on. Otherwise, the panel will not secure fully like it should. Also, as another quick tip before you uh, seal everything off, where the Bluetooth uh, mic is, um, you may want to take a Dremel and, and like Dremel out a small little notch in your panel here. That way you don't pinch any wires. Additionally, if you do decide to route the GPS through the dash, which I would personally prefer that, but I couldn't fig really figure it out too much. So you may want to also put a Dremel hole, you know, somewhere right around here for the GPS antenna. So that way, once again, you're not pinching wires or anything. Do be careful of the uh, defrost ducts and the way so that way you are not screwing with your defrost or any other ventilation controls now that everything's all tucked in you know if you're not going to use the aswc connect uh, controller i guess you're all done um if you are then you're just gonna have to play the waiting game like i am until i can figure this out farther or if you have any tips on how to make this go um please post in the comment as for um, initial impressions and a review unfortunately i've dragged this video out far too long you can thank the access controller frustrations as well as having to partially assemble the radio as i went on that be because i was starting to lose daylight and it's been pretty cold out so i've had to put the rest of this video on hold so i'm gonna make the review in a separate video and forget calling it initial impressions this is just gonna be just a general review and demonstration of the radio because let let's be honest here in between all this time it's uh, starting the video putting it on hold and finishing out like i did today i've had plenty of time to play with this radio so yeah. So with that being said, that was my installation of an aftermarket radio, especially the Jensen VX7010 and your fourth generation Chrysler or Dodge minivan. Anyways, I am Adventure Link. Um, just want to say thank you all for watching my video. I appreciate you watching my videos. Hopefully you got something from this video and you learned something from it. Hopefully this video led you to a successful diagnosis, repair, maintenance task, upgrade, whatever your case may be. Um, in addition to your viewing my videos, you want to know what I also appreciate? Rates and subscriptions, of course. Down in the video description or thereabouts, all the buttons are there. My videos are no exception. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, praise, criticisms, etc. on this video, but no flames, fighting, spam, or other such bullcrap, I would ask that you take it down in the comments section. I'm man enough to take all your comments, so throw whatever you got at me. However, if you have any questions about the uh, Chrysler, Dodge, and Plymouth minivans as a whole, I would ask that you head on over to the uh, Chrysler Minivan Fan Club forums. Additionally, if Facebook is more your thing, I would ask that you head on over to the Chrysler and Dodge Minivan Owners Group on Facebook. Search the forums or Facebook group, join up, post your questions. The fine folks that do the medium will be happy to answer any questions you have in a timely manner. It's kind of cold outside, so make sure you stay warm and bundle up when it's warm outside you know stay cool stay in the shade either way um eat right stay hydrated and stay healthy um work hard have fun and make history see it even says that on the back of this t-shirt here but in any case you know don't let others push you around and this is adventure link signing off with the wise words of wisdom from eric the car guy reminding all y'all out there to be safe have fun and of course stay dirty until then peace out i'll see you all next video later